Umagyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurvena maha shri chaitanya mano bistam staptitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padantikam nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shri bhakti bhakti vedanta swami iti namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nivrasesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Pancha Kaupa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Pe Bacha Petitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Siva Sati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said to Lord Nityananda, I am here in Jagannath Puri, and no one is preaching in Navadweep. So you go back to Navadweep, and begin the Sankirtan movement there. Nityananda had come to see Lord Chaitanya during the Rathayatra festival because their natural love was so strong that Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya was feeling great pain in being separated from each other. So Lord Nityananda disobeyed the orders of, his, of Lord Chaitanya and he came to see him. That's a good disobedience. It's called disobedience out of love. <laughs> so when you love somebody and you, you do something to show your love, then that's better, <laughs> even if they don't want you to do it. <laughs> so there was a secret conversation between Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, you go back the Navadweep. You take all of your associates, because who is Lord Nityananda? He's Balaram. And so, the, no, this is better because, yeah, because that's an extra guy in front of me, you know. We have too many people. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a few people who understand me. No, not too many. <laughs> One, two, that's about all. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> That's okay, I don't even understand myself. <laughs> so, Lord Nityananda is Balaram. And Balaram is a cowherd boy. And his all his associates are cowherd boys. So when he came as Lord Nityananda, he had all his cowherd friends with him. Lord Chaitanya, most of his associates were gopis, because Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya was R Radharani's mood of bhakti. Although he was Krishna, he was carrying her bhav, her mood. So many of his associates, like Srub Damodar, was Lalita Shakti, Shaki, and Ramananda Roy was Vishaka, and. Uh, who else? There was so many. Uh, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, I don't think. He was, I think he was Brihaspati. He was a demigod. So, yeah, Lord Chaitanya's, most of his associates were gopis. And most of Lord Nityananda's associates were gopals, or cowherd boys. So he said, you take all your cowherd boys and you go back and do kirtan in Navadweep and preach the holy name everywhere. So Lord Nityananda, he was a little unhappy that he had to leave Lord Chaitanya, but they came for a mission. So sometimes because of the mission, they had to break the hearts of their devotees and keep the mission first, just like when Krishna left Vrindavan. He had to go to Mathura to take care of political affairs there, kill Kamsa, and reestablish Ugrasena on the throne. So that was politics, <laughs> Krishna politics. So Krishna engaged in political atmosphere by just removing demons. So he had to leave his 
Vrindavan associates, and they were always broken-hearted. But his mission, he kept foremost. So here, even as Gord, Lord Chaitanya, although he broke the hearts of many of his disciples when he took sannyas and went to Jagannath Puri, he had to do it in order to keep the mission of preaching Krishna consciousness alive. Because the Lord comes in order to establish his mission of Yuga Dharma, chanting the holy names. So Lord Nityananda, he gathered all his devotees and they began kirtan and then they were on their way back from Jagannath Puri to Navadweep. That's a long way. Yes, Prabhu? How many kilometers? 500 kilometers from Navadweep to Jagannath Puri. And there was no Rajdani Express, no trains. There were only bullock carts and walking. Sometimes people used horses, but not so much. So getting back and forth took a long time. But Lord Nityananda, he decided to do kirtan all the way back from Jagannath Puri to Navadweep. But they were chanting and dancing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Where are we? Where are We're lost. Which way do we go? I don't know. Do you know where we're going? We're going to Navadvi, but which way is it? I'm not sure. Let's try. Let's ask somebody. Oh, Mr. Villager, which way to Navadvi? Oh, hi, 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 hi. Six miles, go that way, and then take the path to Navadvi. Hi, hi. You know what hi means. Hi, hi. What does hi mean? It also means not good, right? Yeah, when you say hi, hi, hi means something's. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Yeah, don't proceed any farther. <laughs> okay, so then, oh, they fell. Okay, six miles that way, we'll catch the road. So they went six miles, and there was the road. They got on the road, and what did they do? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And they were chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and dancing. And then, guess what? They were lost. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> Which way to Navadweep? I don't know. Let's ask another villager. Mr. Villager, which way to Navadweep? Oh, hi, 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 hi! 20 miles that way. Find the Ganga. Follow Mother Ganga all the way. Okay. No, nema problema. <laughs> A little local language. Okay. You know everything, almost. <laughs> so they got on the run. They were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing. No prashad. Chanting and dancing, chanting and dancing, dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting. Because well, when you chant and dance, you can forget about everything. If you get into the kirtan and the drummers know how to play, then you can keep going for like 100 million millenniums and it doesn't really matter. There's no time. Time stops and you know, you found yourself back in Satya Yuga, you know. It's, Kali Yuga's finished already. <laughs> so you know, it's just, when kirtan goes on, there's no other world, it's just kirtan. And you're only tired if you stop. Don't stop. <laughs> if you stop the kirtan, then you're tired. If, you're not, if you don't stop, you're never tired. Just keep going. You can actually dance off the floor without touching the floor. Really? I've seen devotees do that. Dance off the floor. Yeah. Just dancing and you're not touching the floor. Not for long. Sometimes you come down, but you know, for once. In... 
I used to be able to do it, but then I got proud because I thought I was good. And then Krishna said, all right, you're proud, no more. <laughs> he took it away from me. I, I can't get it back either. I'm trying. <laughs> So, yeah, so they, they, they finally, they followed the Ganga and they got to the house of Raghava Pandit. And Raghava Pandit came out and he saw Lord Nityananda with all his gopals and he came out with a beautiful garland of, I don't know what kind of flowers. <laughs> he came out with a beautiful garland and Lord Nityananda said, I want Kadamba flowers. Nitai. This is not the season for Gadamba flowers. Oh, you go in your backyard and you look and see if you can find some Gadamba flowers. So he went back in his backyard and on the lemon tree he found Gadamba flowers. <laughs> on the lemon tree. <laughs> he was thinking, what is this? <laughs> the lemon tree. So he picked the flowers and made a beautiful garland for Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda. You ever see a Kadamba flower? Prabhu, you saw one. Yeah, you, you, uh, you know, I'm just checking with you so let, let everybody know that I'm, I'm not lying, you know. <laughs> You're my authority for this class. <laughs> I have to have some kind of authority. <laughs> so, uh, have you ever seen a Kadamba flower? Oh, it's so beautiful. It looks like a, an orange, but it's got all kinds of beautiful little stems coming out, and it's round. And when you hold it, you think, I ain't going to give this to anybody. This is mine. <laughs> I'm keeping it. It's so beautiful. And they come yellow, and they come orange, and they're about the size of a tennis ball. And they're so beautiful. So... Lord Nityananda, he likes Kadamba flowers. Kadamba Kainana Rasa Parayana, right? Kadamba Kainana, that's the name of Krishna. He likes Kadamba flowers. So, then everyone, what is that fragrance? We're smelling something sweet. Oh, Damanaka flowers. How did Damanaka flowers scent get here? They're only in Jagannath Puri. Where is that scent coming from? Oh, must be Lord Chaitanya. He must be here somewhere because he always wears a garland of Damanaka flowers. And only two people could see Lord Chaitanya was there. Lord Nityananda and Raghava Pandit. <laughs> That's the only two. Lord Chaitanya came because it says when Lord Nityananda dances, Lord Chaitanya is there. When Ma Sachi Mandra Mata cooks, Lord Chaitanya is there. When Raghava Pandit and his sister Damayanti make their famous, what is it called, Raghava Jali, Raghava Jali, Lord Chaitanya is there. He's there in four places always. When, when Lord Nityananda dances, He's always there. So he was there, but no one could see him. He was secret. But the, the Damanaka flowers gave away his, uh, his presence. So then the kirtan began again, and Lord Nityananda started to dance. If you could see Lord Nityananda dance, you would think there's nothing else I want to see after that. I've seen everything. That's perfection of my eyesight. I, now I understand what my eyes were made for, just seeing Lord Nityananda dance, because he is called Nitai. No, Nitai. Nataraj. Nata means dance, and Raj means king. He is the king of good. There's Gaur Nataraj, and Nitai Nataraj, and Krishna Nataraj. They're all Nataraj, king of the dancers. If you could see Lord Nityananda dance, you would think, what else is there to see? Nothing. <laughs> I've seen it. This is the perfection of life. He was so expert at dancing and so sweetly, so gracefully, and he always knew how to do newer and newer dance moves just to make everybody dance even more like that. 
So that's our movement, chanting, dancing, and what's the other one? Sleeping? No. <laughs> feasting. <laughs> chanting, dancing, and feasting. So you chant, you dance, you eat, you chant, you dance, you eat, you chant, you dance and eat, chant and dance and eat, chant and dance and eat, 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 chant, dance, 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 chant, chant, dance, and eat, eat, eat. Okay, you got that? Write it down. <laughs> She's writing it down. Very good. Thank you. Okay, make sure make copies for everybody. <laughs> so, and this, so the kirtan went on. And they danced for, chanted for, and danced for one month? No. Two months? No. Three months? Yes. That kirtan, it's described by Vrindavan Das Thakur, that kirtan went on for three full months. Same place. Same place. Devotees were, were mad, completely mad. They were picking the trees out of the ground and uprooting them and dancing with the trees. And some people were, were like levitating. They were walking up the side of the tree, you know, like you walk up, and then they were walking out to the end of the branches and dancing on the twigs, and the twigs weren't breaking. And then one, there's one description where one devotee said, I am the monkey soldier, Angara! And he jumped. <laughs> Angara was the son of who? Sugriva, right? Yeah, Sugriva's son was Angara, right? And he was a good monkey soldier. So They were imitating the monkeys and dancing, and, and then they were uprooting trees. And then the villagers around the area, they were thinking, Wow, what a kirtan. So they came and they started to dance. And all the kids about your size and even smaller, they came and they started to dance. And they became empowered. And they danced for one month. And they started to pick up the, the little trees, not the big trees. And they were picking up the trees and dancing with the trees. Jai Pataka Maharaj tells this story. I can't tell it like he tells it. <laughs> Maharaj, when he tells this story, he tells the whole details. And it's just like, you can just like... Wow. <laughs> wow, it's this amazing story. So then they were chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting. And then they decided to go on to Navadweep. So when they got to Navadweep, you know, Lord Nityananda, he's Balaram. He likes to dress really, really luxuriously. He likes nice jewelry and ornaments and rings and bangles. Uh, he would make some of the ladies look like they were undressed with all the stuff that he had on. You know, jewelry and all kinds of, you know, crowns. So he would do kirtan like that. Lord Nityananda would do kirtan in the streets. So there was one Dakoit. He was a Brahmin, fallen Brahmin. So he was a da he was the leader of the Dakoits. And he was he would rob people. But then he saw Lord Nityananda, he said, Whoa, boy, if we could steal what he has, we could retire. We could, you know, give up our Steve theory, and we could go to uh, we could go to the island of Is and have a you know uh, a party there. And we could ask the Slovenians to dance with us. You know, <laughs> and so he was he just wanted he was thinking, wow, look at all that stuff in one place. So he called his associates. You see that? Yeah. If we can get that, wow, yeah. There's enough for for all of us plus more. Because he had rings and jewelry and bangles and necklaces and all kinds of nice golden ornaments and silver and jewelry. Lord Nityananda was, you know, he, you girls can't even come close. <laughs> so decorated. And he would go out in the streets like that and, and chant and dance. And then, uh, so they made a plan. He was staying at the house of Jagadish Pandit along with his associates. So the Lord would 
every day do kirtan, and then in the night they would go to the house and they would do some more kirtan and they would have prasadam. So after the day's end, the, uh, the Brahmin who was a Dakwood, he said, okay, we'll wait till it's dark and then we'll attack. So they were waiting and waiting and waiting and they had, each of them had five different weapons, swords and daggers and all kinds of, you know, tree shoes, all kinds of stuff. So they were ready to attack. But as they were waiting, they all fell asleep. There was five of them plus the Dakwait leader. They all went to sleep. And the next morning, uh -huh, uh -huh. what happened? Here's the sun. You fell asleep. No, you fell asleep. It was your fault. You were supposed to wake us up. No, it was your fault. They started arguing. And the Dakwait leader said, no, no. We didn't worship Chandi Devi. And she was not pleased. So let's go worship Goddess Durga and get her blessings. And then tomorrow we'll attack again. Okay. So that day they went out and worshipped Goddess Durga. Got their blessings, you know, <laughs> Durga Devi. And uh, they came back. So the next night they went to the house where Lord Nityananda was staying. And they saw, wow, what is this? There was these huge, gigantic centuries, guards, big guards with huge swords and big boots and all kinds of armor on, and they were walking around the house saying, uh, uh, uh. they weren't chanting, uh, uh, uh. and there was so many of them. So the Dakoit leader said, I think the king has come and he's brought his soldiers, so it's not a good time. <laughs> so they, they retired from the night. So now they were all ready. So after some days, they got ready again. So they, this time they were all ready to go. So they went back again another night and there the guards were gone. And this was a perfect night. Everything looked so nice. So then they were all... And then all of a sudden, while it was, they were ready to attack, it started getting darker and darker and darker and darker. And it became so dark that darkness looked like light. It was really dark. And it was, they couldn't see. So they started to walk this way, and one of them fell in the canal and broke his leg. Ah! Another one went into a bush full of thorns and got stuck. Ah! And another one fell into a pit where there were all mosquitoes and scorpions and ah, 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 And so, and each one of them were, were either falling, breaking their legs, or getting bitten by all kinds of bugs. And then, guess what? Lord Indra tried to, decided to make it worse. So it started to rain, <laughs> and it rained, and it really rained, and it came so hard. Then not only did it rain, but these big ice balls were coming down. It was hailing. It was hitting the dacoits. Ah! And they were suffering from the bites and getting hit with the, 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 the hail, and they would chung, poom, pang, ping, pang, poom, poom. <laughs> they were just, ah! So it was going on the whole night. And Indra was really mad because he said, you can't do that to Nityananda. <laughs> so he was just palmating with ice balls. And finally, the leader of the Dakoites, something happened. His heart changed. And he started to, he said, I think this Nityananda is the Supreme Lord. Oh, how offensive we have been. And then he, his mind became peaceful. And as soon as he started to think like that, the hail stopped, the rain stopped, and everything was quiet. And a few hours later, the sun came out. And then all of the, all of the Dakarts, they were just like.
They were like, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. All glories to cell phones. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so they, yeah. So they, and then the dad quite, he got his friends together. He said, I think this Nityananda is, is God. <laughs> so that night, the next night when Lord Nityananda was there, he decided to go surrender to Lord Nityananda. His heart was completely changed. He actually was, became humble, and he wanted to, you know, offer his respects. So he came to the house, and when the devotees saw, because they, they knew who he was, he was a Dakite, all the devotees got scared. Oh my God, here comes this Dakite, what does he want? Lord Nityananda said, no, no, that's all right. So he came in, and then he went right up to Lord Nityananda and fell at his feet grabbed his feet and started to cry and cry and cry. He was crying, crocodile tears, and just crying and crying and saying, oh, I'm so offensive. I didn't know who you were. I wanted to do harm to you. I don't even deserve to live. I'm such a rascal. I'm such a fool, such a bad person. Please punish me from all my misdeeds. Lord Nityananda started to, you know, Lord Nityananda, he's very kind. As Balaram, he would have just finished him off. But, <laughs> but Lord Nityananda is a little more different. So he started rubbing his head like his son, you know, and saying, that's okay, I forgive you. <laughs> and then and then after some time, the, the, the Dakoid said, Lord, I want to serve you. How can I serve you? And Lord Nityananda gave him some seva. He said, you are the leader of all the Dakwites in this area. Now you have become a devotee. You make all the Dakwites devotees. So it's good to have one or two Dakwites as devotees because they can change all the other Dakwites. Is there any Dakwites here? No. <laughs> okay, we got one. You look pretty effulgent for a Dakwe. You must have been that incarnation of that Dakwe during Lord Nityananda's pastime. <laughs> so, yeah, and then he went out and he transformed all the Dakwe's into devotees. So Lord Nityananda used him to make everybody a devotee. Now that's a beautiful story. And that's described in Chaitanya Bhagavan. How Lord Nityananda, Nitai Padakamalam, Koti Chandra Shushitala, Ye Chayai Jagada Dura, Heno Vene Nitai Bai Radha Krishna Pati Nai, Dritya Koli Kikori Bai Ta. Hmm. So if you worship Lord Nityananda, then you can worship Lord Chaitanya. So if you get the mercy of your spiritual master, then you get the mercy of Nityananda. Because your spiritual master is, your, is the representative of Nityananda. And if you get the mercy of Nityananda, you get the mercy of Chaitanya. And when you get the mercy of Chaitanya, you get the mercy of Srimati Radharani. And if you get the mercy of Radharani, then you get the mercy of Krishna. And if you get the mercy of Krishna, then you don't, then you get the mercy of what? Jagadath? No. Oh, no. Balar. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Jagannath Samhita, page 220, 221. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, this is because. The Lord, the spiritual master is a representative of Lord Nityananda. So if he's pleased, then Bodo Sukhe Kabo Gai, Bodo Sukhe Sura Bikundeche, Namera Kureche, Koda Nitai. So Lord Nityananda is a merchant and he goes around everywhere and he sets up his business. He's got this traveling stand, he sets it up and he, he has a sign out there this is the greatest product anywhere. Bring your money and you can get it. And to many how much money you get, you can have that much of the merchandise. So what is the merchandise? Hmm? Faith is the money. <laughs> Faith is the money and the merchandise is the holy name. 
Depending on how much faith you have when you chant the holy name, that's how much you can receive the mercy of the holy name. Depends on faith. If you know that there's nothing in this world besides the holy name, then you have understood everything. Hmm. Because that's, that's the actual understanding. Because it's mentioned by Jiva Goswami, there's only two things in this world. The living entities and the holy name. That's all. There's nothing else. Everything else is just the illusionary energy. Jiva, we're all, all the living entities are Jiva. That's spiritual, that's eternal. And Krishna has come in the form of the holy name. That's all there is. That's it. <laughs> if you know that, you know everything. But you have to know it from the heart, not just from the head. Because the head will change, but the heart, once it's in the heart, it doesn't change. Jai <laughs> Jagannath. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ah. So... And so Lord Nityananda is selling the holy name. So those who purchase it and start chanting, and then they develop a taste for chanting, then Nam Ruchi brings you to the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because that's what he came. He came to deliver the mercy of the holy name. And when you chant and you develop a taste for chanting, then the mercy of the holy, then Lord Chaitanya's mercy becomes strong. Then, when you develop a taste for chanting, Lord Nityanand, Lord Chaitanya teaches, takes you to Vrindavan. And Radharani is Vrindavaneshwari. She controls Vrindavan, so nobody can get in without her mercy. You can go to Vrindavan and you can stay there your whole life, but if you don't get the mercy of Radharani, you haven't reached Vrindavan yet. Radharani's mercy comes when you develop a sweet taste to chant the holy names because Krishna's name is Krishna. And when Radharani sees, she said, oh, the Krishna, this, this person is really nice. He likes to chant your name. And then Krishna says, oh, I don't know. He doesn't look that good. You sure, Radha? Prabhu, I don't tell you anything that's not true. <laughs> All right, let me check him out. <laughs> and Krishna comes and gives his mercy like that. So. so if you get Krishna's mercy, that's all that's needed. And Krishna's mercy is the highest form of mercy. So Krishna's mercy comes through different agencies, but if you get it directly, whoa! That's powerful. <laughs> That's powerful. Okay, so we don't want to take too much time because tomorrow is the big day, right? Lord Chaitanya is appearing. But he's appearing on his anniversary day, which comes every year at this time. But the real appearance is to bring the Lord into the heart and purify the heart by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantras. So Lord Chaitanya likes kirtan more than anything. If you do kirtan, you will achieve the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He loves kirtan. Okay, uh, good to see our our technical dancer over there. I say technical because you know how to work all those machines. <laughs> You're a techie and a dancey. Both, that's good. <laughs> he dances technically too. <laughs> Very interesting type of dance. It's, I would have to say it is wonderful to watch. <laughs> All right, so I won't take too much time because I know everybody wants to get ready for tomorrow. We all want to be samsara davanala lita loka tannaya karunaganaganatvam patasya kalyanam gurnarnavasyaham Bande Guru Shri 
Charan Harvind. Oh my God, I'm up this early in the morning. What am I doing up? <laughs> I'm singing. Wow, it's not so bad. I don't think I'll go back to sleep. <laughs> so we'll get ready for tomorrow's full day of activities. And today we just did a little, as they say, this was the warm-up band, and then the main band comes on tomorrow for the big concert. <laughs> we give you, when they, when they have a feast, they give you the hors d'oeuvres first. They call the the tasters. And so when you have a, ju a huge feast, they give you little tasters. I remember I went to a feast one time, and I ate all the tasters, and when the feast came, I couldn't eat anything else. <laughs> because they were so good. <laughs> I just wanted the tasters. When the feast came, I didn't really like it. <laughs> it was somebody's wedding. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, well, we got Rishab here. We got, one, we got a foreigner. He came in. Okay, thank you. Rishab travels around, brings his mercy everywhere. He comes and he inspires the devotees in philosophy and in kirtan. Okay, they'll do it. <laughs> it's mutual. <laughs> all right, so we'll see you all tomorrow. I don't want to take up too much time. So, Vancha Kalpa, Tarupischa, Kripa Sindhu Pe Vacha, Vatita Nam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Flower Garland Makers Ki Jai. Ladies who are doing decorations, ki jai. Ladies who are not doing decorations, ki jai. <laughs> Ladies who want to do decorations but are not, ki jai. <laughs> Ladies who are doing decorations but don't want to, ki jai. <laughs>